Well, hey guys, Silly Tuck here. Welcome back to another episode of Extreme Championship Wrestling, ECW. This is, of course, Hardcore TV. I've actually lost track of what episode this is. It might be 102, 103, something like that, most likely. Um, I apologize <laughs> for the inconsistency with uploads. Some are hit, and I was supposed to get uh, a little bit more consistent, and I was for the first bit. Um, but biggest problem for me is... The workload, like my IRL workload at my job, um, has increased a lot. I work two um, part-time jobs, um, but one of them is much more time-consuming than the other. I work almost um, six, seven hours every single day. Uh, not almost every single day, but it'll be typically four or five days a week uh, working six, seven hours at this one job, and then my other is kind of like a three-hour thing I do once a day, mostly to help out um, because they were my first job, I feel some loyalty there, um, but, 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 um, yeah, hopefully this goes up on Sunday afternoon-ish, I'm gonna do my best to get it up, if it isn't, I'm gonna get it up whenever I have a next day off, or actually, all I will be doing is making the thumbnail, so I could probably just get it up, uh, the next day, I kind of have a chance, I just, I could probably make the thumbnail actually Saturday night, and then put it up Sunday afternoon or so. Just the biggest problem for me, of course, is, you know, making thumbnails, uh, uploading everything, making sure I have time to get everything up and sorted uh, before I'd have to leave. Uh, but anyways, thank you so much for sticking with this. I know sometimes it's tough um, on me, especially when I want to create content um, and I just kind of can't because I'm too tired from work um, and I do very much mean too tired. I do. Um, if you ever worked in a restaurant of any kind, uh, I do. Uh, I do prep work. So it's like 9 a.m. in the morning to about 3 or 4 in the afternoon. You get home, your back hurts, you're tired, you haven't, you know, slept very well. Um, and you kind of just want to hang out and do whatever you want to do in that moment. And for the most part, it's not often record something, and I apologize for that. Uh, but, you know, sometimes you need to just sit there and watch TV or watch YouTube for a couple hours or I've taken up reading actually again I'm reading for the first time since like I've been forced to in classes uh it's great actually I enjoy it a lot um I start I read um I bought uh the Hobbit and the three Lord of the Rings books I'm on a bit of a Lord of the Rings kick currently um I thought about picking up the Cimmerillion but I didn't know how long this reading kick would last I'm actually pretty far into the Hobbit I'm almost done it uh, I'm trying to make it last, as uh, I bought them off Amazon, The Hobbit came like a day after I ordered, without any kind of express shipping, and the Lord of the Rings books aren't going to be here till like mid-August, so I'm trying to make The Hobbit last as long as I can, to try to, you know, build consistency, so I only do about a chapter every night, even if that chapter is only like 20 pages long, um, it's nice. Anyways, we are in the Herb Brooks Arena in the Tri-State region. Let me see here. How big is that? Does that look... Yeah, it looks suitable. We'll go there. Uh, this is the Fallout show from Anarchy Rules, I believe. Yeah, we're, we're on the road to November to Remember proper. I'm very excited for that. Let's do it to it. Wow, this did not very well. I, okay, whatever. 70C plus for Rob Van Dam opening up with a promo, I guess because it was rated on the overness of some other guys. Um, RBE cuts a promo talking about kind of what happened. And he says, you know, for the most part, I think of myself as a pretty me first guy. I'm not much of a company man, as they like to say. I'm not your... Tommy Dreamer out there beating the horn of all the people. I'm not I'm not Taz, you know. I don't fight for goodness or whatever the fuck Taz fights for. Who even knows? Dude's just an animal. Props to Taz. I'm not Raven necessarily. I don't fight for some weird abstract idea of exposing society for what it is, whatever. But I kind of just fight for myself and money. I like money. <laughs> Um, but I did some thinking since Anarchy Rules, and if you haven't seen the main event of Anarchy Rules, I had the chance to go back to November to Remember, to headline November to Remember again, to get my championship back, to fight Raven, beat him, because trust me, I'd beat him, I would, I would, and Raven knows it, I guess that's why he 
Almost gave me the win. No, 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 it's fine. I would have beaten you, Raven. But I chose something different. I chose to do things the right way. God, that feels so weird to say, but I did the right damn thing. And I didn't take advantage. I let Taz recover. I fought off Raven and that little lap dog of his. And we continued the match when Taz said he was ready to. And he beat me. Taz beat me. God damn it. And I'm not happy about it. And I'm sure some people in this arena aren't happy about it. But I'll tell you this. That dude's got a damn good shot at getting the job done. And if it wasn't me, the only other person who I think might be able to get it done outside of myself would be Taz. But why did I do it? I don't know. I don't know. There's... I thought for a little while I did it just to spite Raven, or at least that's what I told myself in the moment, but now I'm thinking it was something more, something vital. Maybe I... Maybe I actually kind of cared a little bit about this place, but only because I hate seeing Raven with that belt. Only because... I know Taz will get it done. If it was anybody else, ooh, probably would have just taken the win. But Taz is one tough son of a bitch, and he's got my respect. And Raven, you've got something coming for you that I can't really describe with words. It's a, it's a tank. It's going to run you over. He's got so much momentum on his side. I fear for you sometimes, dude. I thought about that. I thought about what I had set in motion heading straight towards you. The fact that I've literally sent the greatest destroying force in this entire company straight for you. And it feels damn good to know that when you're laying on your ass at the end of November to remember, it's because I decided so. Because don't get me wrong, folks, this company still revolves around me, belt or not. In the meantime, though, I've got some business to settle. What's that business? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I have not spoken to Rob Van Dam. I'm not personal friends with Rob Van Dam, even though I might be. I think I've said before I am. I'm not sure. He's good. He's good. He's good. Moving on. We get a 68C plus, actually a really good match. I think it's Darren Drawstyle's last match. I'm letting his contract run out. I just don't. I don't use draws, so maybe he'll just go somewhere else or something. And about that, I had decent wrestling, but didn't have much heat. Too Cold Scorpio is actually a really good wrestler, and he beats Darren Drawstyle in about 10 minutes by pinfall to Scorpio Splash. I gave Draws one last competitive match here against a guy who I actually value a lot in Scorpio. But it doesn't matter. Scorpio picks up the win. He's celebrating. He's dancing. He's doing all that cool shit. And just, just over the fucking guardrail, Singapore cane in hand, crack. Sandman just one shot knocks him down. Like, probably, I, I want to say, like, back of the neck type region, you know what I mean? Like, actually, fucking boom, unloads on him, knocks Scorpio out. And woman kind of looks on, and Sandman stares at him and kind of, you know, twirls it in his hand. Kind of like a, kind of like a lightsaber. But, uh, you know, just brings it up, and again, just cracks it over his back. Does it again, and again, and again, and again, until finally we get, like, the two security guys who are just, like... <laughs> it's Blue Meanie and Stevie Richards, like, dressed up. Uh, they finally kind of separate Sandman off of Scorpio, um... And we're trying to get uh, any kind of doctor to look at him, and unfortunately the only doctor we have... Um, is uh, Chris Cruz, our color commentator. So he kind of comes out and he's like, I, I'm i literally not a doctor, though. Like, I, I have no idea. I don't know. And they're like, well, we can't pay for his medical. I, I don't know. Uh, we, uh, there's no money. <laughs> but yeah, Sandman beats up Two Cold Scorpio. Maybe we'll get an explanation next week. Hmm. Oh, I missed. Uh, we get a promo from Tommy Dreamer. Yes, awesome. I've been waiting for this Dreamer promo. Dreamer comes out with the mic and he says, 
Got some questions, kind of, haven't you? <laughs> yeah. I've been asked a couple different things by different fans, different people, different friends. Am I suicidal? No. That I'm not, un unfortunately. I mean, you know. I'm not, though. Am I crazy? Probably. Do I think before I act? Yes. But I'll tell you one thing above all, Tommy Dreamer does not think with his head, I think with my heart. And when I see a guy who stands for so much of what makes this company special in Sabu, getting his ass kicked by a big, black masked animal. No, that is black masked, not black masked animal, alright? Tommy Dreamer, not a racist confirmed. Um, you know, Tommy says, I, I have to step in. I can't, he, Sabu is a guy who's so important to this company right now that he cannot get injured for nothing. Just because Percy Pringle doesn't have control over his demonic thing. No, that's not his penis I'm talking about, folks. Abyss... Abyss is pretty fucking scary. I won't. I won't even lie. He's pretty fucking scary. He's pretty fucking intimidating. He kind of kicks people's asses. He beat. He beat up Sabu pretty fucking bad. Like, I probably have very little chance going into this. But I'll tell you this. I didn't fight my whole career, knowing I had good chances at things. Look at me. I literally wrestle in a T-shirt, in a company T-shirt that I take from the merch stand every night because I'm too cheap to buy my own. And some slacks. I've got some training shoes on, and I tape my wrists. That's about the, the that's about the expense of it. Taping the wrists. I didn't get into this business knowing that I had a really good shot at doing things, but I found a way. And it's through my connection with the people. It's through my connection with you that I'm able to achieve what I achieve. And I think that through that connection, we're going to be able to do it one more time. So Abyss, Percy Pringle. I know you're going to want to fight. And there's a pretty big fucking show coming up. So what do you say? I take on Abyss in any kind of match you two want. I don't care what it is. There's a lot of talk around here. You see it in, in Sandman's vignettes. You see it in Sandman's actions. You see it in Abyss. You see it in Sabu. There's, there's a fire of violence churning in the belly of this company and November to remember is going to be a violent damn show it always is but this year it feels something different and I want to be a part of it since Beulah left since she went off to have our child I've realized that maybe pro wrestling doesn't last forever and that at some point you have to take a step back and just be a dad. When is that? I don't know. I don't want to stop doing this. Surely I don't. But what's going to happen when I come home to my kid with a sliced forehead, my back cut open, bleeding all over the place, having bones repaired in the hospital? God, what if they saw it on TV? Even worse. I'm not sure what the future holds for me. And this is not a retirement not at all. But I need this. At least this one last one. Abyss, you pick the fucking stipulation if you're capable. If not, Percy, you do it for him. I will meet you on November, insert date here, at November, remember. And I'm going to raise whatever fucking weapon I can find as high in the air as possible when my name is called and your winner, the innovator of violence, the heart of extreme championship wrestling, Tommy Dreamer. We get a match here. It is Spike Dudley versus Little Guido. Actually, pretty decent. And about that had decent wrestling, but didn't have much heat. Little Guido defeats Spike Dudley by submission with a Sicilian crab. Little Guido continuing his push to the world championship. Excuse me. All right, backstage. We see... Jeff and Matt Hardy, they're backstage, walking around. 
they bump into the still tag team champions, the retaining tag team champions, Lance Storm, Chris Candido. They're, of course, joined with Don Marie and Tori Wilson. And Matt and Jeff basically just lay it out there. They talk about how they should be number one contenders for those belts. And that, you know, Paul Heyman's going to have a decision to make regarding November to remember soon, who's going for those tag team belts. But they feel like they've got a pretty good chance. They've been tag team champions for the most months of 1999 out of any group. There was only in two, three months this entire year that they weren't tag team champions. And reminder, we're about... Uh, what, eight months, nine months in? Nine months. Ten months. Fuck, I can do math. We're, we're almost 11 months in, and they've been champs for maybe nine, ten of them. Like, oh, what the fuck am I talking about? I just said ten. Maybe not. Fuck, maybe eight, seven of them? I'm very good at math, folks. I'm very good at math. That's why I'm... <laughs> that's why I'm going to major in history. Um, yeah, no, but, you know, they should be number one contenders. And Storm and Candido are just kind of like, if you're chosen... We'll kick your ass, losers. Top guys out. <laughs> uh, we got a promo with Jerry Lynn. Um, you know, we got like a reporter or something like that, and they ask Jerry. Maybe it's like a press conference or something like that. I, I was just trying to think of different ways to spice it up. Maybe it's a press conference and somebody asks Jerry, you know, what does it mean to you to fight uh, somebody like Jushin Liger at a show as big as November to remember? Jerry pauses for a minute, thinks, and he says, what does it mean to fight Jushin Liger? Well, if I'm totally honest with you, it means the world to me. Um, I know I was champion last year around this time, but this almost feels bigger to me, at least emotionally, because it's one thing to fight and prove to be that you're a champion, right? To crawl from nothing, to crawl from a guy who was often told he'd never be champion, to being a champion, it's always a good feeling, but... When you're chosen by your boss, Paul Heyman, to be in such a high-profile match for the company on the landscape of pro wrestling, it is a tremendous honor. And I think, at least for me personally, it feels much better. I, I of course, enjoy the competition aspect of pro wrestling. It's why I'm a pro wrestler. But... There's a certain pride of your character, your work ethic, when somebody else can look at you from a distance and pick you to go up against somebody who's as legendary in the history of this great sport as Jushin Liger, especially at a big of a show as November to Remember. Thank you. We have a match here. It's actually a really good one. 70C+. Plus. We have an about that had decent wrestling but didn't have much heat. The Suicide Blondes defeated Tosatsuba when Sex and Hardcastle defeated Dajiri by pinfall with a leaping DDT. We just saw a segment that talked the Hardy Boys, you know, right? They were talking about how they should be no more contender. And the Suicide Blondes just won a match. Oh, geez, this is going to start becoming kind of complex, isn't it? That's unfortunate. It's the best part about the tag team rankings in this series, I think. It's just the fact that everybody's kind of just always around the top spot, except for, like, in reality, Tosatsuba hasn't had a title match yet, I don't think. But they're still kind of fresh. I think next year they're definitely going to be more of a focus in this series. They've kind of just been thrown to the wayside kind of because I have four big kind of groups fighting around the tag belts right now. Hint, hint for the match at November to Remember, by the way. Uh, well, this is actually a really good segment. 78B. Um, so Chris Jericho... <laughs> He's 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 feeling kind of kind of frisky tonight, kind of kind of kooky. You get a little sugar in him. He, he's getting all kooky. No, um, he kind of enters Shane Douglas's locker room where Shane Douglas. I don't know where the fuck Shane Douglas is, but come on, is there? And she's like, "What? What the fuck? No, get out of here!" And Jericho is kind of just like, "Yeah, no," and he just pulls out a chair and just sits in Shane Douglas's locker room. And of course, that fucking freaks out Kimona. She's like, what the, what the absolute fuck? He, no, uh uh So she goes, and she says, I'm going to go get Shane, and when I do, you're fucked, right? You, you, you're, you're fucked. And Chris Jericho says, that's fine. And so we kind of see Jericho kind of looks towards the lockers of Shane Douglas's locker room, 
and we cut to Kimona, and Kimona's, like, going up to Shane, and she's found Shane Douglas. It's been a little bit, but she's found Shane Douglas, and she's like, Shane, what the fuck? Like, Chris, he's in your fucking locker room. You gotta go beat his ass. He's freaking me out. I don't know. He's just there. He might take something, and Shane's like, what the fuck, bitch? You didn't stay there? What the fuck if he did steal something? I have, like, my drugs in there. <laughs> and Shane runs to, to go find Chris Jericho, and he enters his locker room, and he's, he, we get a shot of him kind of going in the door, and all you hear is him go, what? What the fuck? And all of the lockers in his locker room, so, like, I imagine it kind of like a WWE locker room. If you've ever played SVR 11, you know, like, the wooden lockers that they have? So, like, Shane Douglas has, like, a whole thing with that, because it's him, Kimona, Dom Marie, Tori Wilson, Lance, and Chris, right? So they're all, like, kind of in the same area. Every single one of the lockers has just been pulled apart, like, with, like, a screwdriver or something. Like, handyman Chris Jericho has unscrewed all the parts of the lockers, and there's just wood all over the floor, and there's stuff thrown everywhere. It's the most mildly annoying thing ever, but I think it's perfect for Chris Jericho to do, because Chris Jericho's, like, half egocentric crazy guy, and half just absolute troll. Like, he just just fucks with people that he doesn't like. (laughs) That's that's your development for a feud built around uh, who, like, literally, basically a story that's a fucking, like, uh, oh, what the fuck's the word? I fucking had it. It's a fucking allegory, basically, for fucking uh, immigration. But, you know, yeah, no, he, he fucking unscrews his locker or something. I don't know. Anyways, move forward. Oh, shit, this did really fucking well. Before our main event, which, by the way, it's a television championship rematch. Don't worry, though. Spoiler, Chris Jericho's gonna win, so I didn't bother hyping it up, but you're gonna be fine. Don't even worry about it. That's not the important part. The aftermath is. Um, Mike Awesome, we just got a video package to him being scary. I don't have him booked on November Remember, so I've just gotta be like, hey, look, he's he's still he's still here. He, he exists. Okay, this actually does pretty well. In an ADB, in about that had good wrestling and a decent reaction to the crowd, Kurt Angle just defeats Mikey Whipwreck again in about 16-13 by pinfall and Angle Slam. Kurt Angle makes the best number one of his World Television Championship. Awesome stuff. That looks totally cool. And here comes another big fucking announcement. Paul Heyman comes out, 79, to close it out. Paul Heyman comes out, and he says, Kurt, I kind of set a weird precedent last year when I... Let Taz fight somebody from out of the company for the World Television Championship. And I know that we've already got Jerry Lynn fighting Jushin Liger, but when I called and asked about Jushin Liger, I was offered somebody else kind of as well for one night. Of course, the Japanese officials respect the the grandeur of the November to Remember show, and we appreciate that. But I was offered somebody else, and I thought that just maybe, Kurt, they'd be a perfect opponent for you. That's right, folks. We're going to have another special guest fighting for the ECW World Television Championship at November to Remember. And Kurt, do you want to know who it is? Well, I'll show you. And instead of doing, like, the Tyler Breeze thing that they did with Jushin Liger, where, like, it pops up on the Titantron, I still assume we're not, we don't have the budget to do a Titantron. So, Paul Heyman literally just, out of his pocket, unravels, like, a scroll. It's like a big, like, fold-out photo. And he holds it up, and holy fuck. At November to Remember, Kurt Angle will be defending his ECW World Television Championship. Almost said heavyweight, but it's not the World television championship against Ultimo Dragon. If you're not excited about Liger Lynn, I hope Dragon Angle has you kind of excited. Because I'm I'm kind of starting to get really good at this whole booking dudes who really should fucking wrestle each other thing. Because that's kind of my thing here. There's some ASMR tapping for you that I've just started doing for no reason, mostly because I'm just kind of excited that I just pulled that reveal off so well. Ah, And also, it's the end of the month, which means great things. It means it's Halloween. Oh, God. Spooks. Spooks. Maybe. What? What? Hold on. Chris Cage is 25. Matt Hardy is also 25. Matt, what the fuck? You can't talk like that. (laughs) 
Um, okay. So. Again, that was our Halloween show. So let's say that, like, I don't know. Somebody was dressed up in, like, an outfit or something like that. We had, like... Oh, that's where Shane Douglas was when they couldn't find him. Shane Douglas was trick-or-treating at other locker rooms. <laughs> oh, I popped myself too much. Um, okay, I have to go sign up Ultimo. Uh, he will come. He's just going to be here for, like, not very long. Okay, so you... Oh. Oh, I already had negotiations going with him. Okay, never mind then. So, yeah, Ultimo's coming in. I basically got the, the thing going on with him. We might even sign him in this episode because I do need to do tomorrow kind of fix the whole like we're we're burning money thing you know what i mean um but i'll do that off camera i'll just give myself back the funds i literally just do that i just i borrow money from vince like all the time so don't even trip um there's liger by the way there's where he is in our franchise players which like oh my god i think he's also yeah he's number two and he's number one like he's this match against lynn's probably gonna be pretty fucking good i hope um, yeah, let's, let's just flip to November 99, and there's Barry Horowitz, I'm, I'm so glad that we're, like, really, we're constantly making progress in this, and I know, of course, I always would be constantly, ooh, Halloween Havoc, we can also look at that, no, but, uh, like, of course, we'd always be making progress, but I'm really proud of how far this series has come, I know it hasn't been two years yet, but it basically has been, and I feel like that's pretty long for a TW series, um, I think you see a lot of TW YouTuber people, um, drop series quite easily. I'm kind of guilty of that in my earlier years, but I think kind of as I've matured on uh, on YouTube, I've gotten much better at sticking to things. Um, there are other people, of course, who have stuck to things longer or have a better production rate than I do, but, you know, I'm busy with work mostly now, which I apologize for again, but, um, you know, I may not always be able to pump out, you know, three episodes of the same fucking series every single day, uh, but I damn well try, and oh my god, that's a lot of dudes leaving. <sighs> okay, I see one rejection. A lot, oh, 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 I see Dean Malenko, baby! Fuck yeah! <laughs> Okay, I'll, I'll look through all these on care with you guys because I'm fucking hyped for that. Okay, let's first check out Halloween Havoc. Halloween Havoc does an 87B. We got some pre-show matches I don't care about. Louis Spicoli hasn't died yet, which is interesting. Um, Lodi defeated Ernest Miller by countout. <sighs> politically Incorrect defeated Public Enemy. Oh, Politically Incorrect is Scott Vick and Brian Clark. What the fuck? The absolute fuck? Okay, Hall and Hogan, like, fuck each other backstage. Riggs defeats Psychosis. Psychosis, no. No, Psychosis. Um, Kidman defeats Glacier, which I agree with. Malenko defeats Evan Courageous, which actually would be pretty fun, I think, of a match. Ric Flair and Perry Saturn yell at each other before Flair beats him. Uh, Stevie Ray defeats Eddie Guerrero for the U.S. belt. No! Eddie loses his U.S. belt to Stevie Ray. Fuck. Vicious and Delicious defeated the Pencil Pushers. Oh my god, I forgot that that's fucking Chris Canyon and Rey Mysterio. Which I think actually would be Mortis and Mysterio, which is a way cooler tag team name. Sting defeated Booker T to retain the WCW belt. And the tag belts main event is DDP and Randy Savage defeat the Steiner Brothers. Very, very cool. Here's Heat if you cared about it. Norman Smiley beat Bart Gunn. Oh god. Okay. This is epic. Um, I'm going to have to <laughs> deal with all of these. Okay, so. Candido. Um, Jesus Christ. Yeah, come back on. God, oh, Jesus. Okay. What the fuck saves me the most money? Probably a written deal. Because, like, I'm trying to convert contracts over, but I'm not going out of my way to sign people. So, like, we'll probably just do written. Keep them written. Go with that. Okay, that's dealt with. That's, that's, that's dealt with. What did I do? Nothing. Okay. I thought I was stupid, but I'm not. Okay. Holy, f okay, fuck. Okay. This is this is a lot of lot of shit to deal with. Okay, we're 
I'm just looking for things that I care about, okay, right? So, Big Dick Dudley should come back. He's an okay hand. I just, I like, I like having Big Dick around, okay? It's actually probably going to cost me less to do a per appearance deal on Big Dick, just because I don't use him all the time. We'll go one year for Big Dick on per appearance. Okay, so Big Dick is dealt with. Okay, WCW made an offer to Chris Benoit, which means I'm not getting Benoit, which means we should delete those. God, this is such a fucking, like, <laughs> it's such a fucking intense episode, but I want you guys to be here. I want you to see what I go through for you people. Okay, so Eddie's deal is coming up. Did they extend Eddie? They did. Delete that. Malenko... Did they extend Malenko? Right, they didn't, which is awesome, because that means he's coming in. At 39, you may think, oh my god, why the fuck is he so much money? Okay, whatever, Dean, you fucking animal, you. Well, hopefully, maybe, get you to sign a cheaper deal. Um, because good god, that's a bit, that's a bit much there, brother. What'd you want? 2140. Oof. Oof. God, Dean, you're you're fucking hurting me, brother. But it's okay, because I'll probably use you enough. So. Yeah. Yeah, okay, that's fine. That's the WCW Cruiserweight Champion we're going to bring in. That's awesome. Okay, Perry Saturn got an extension offer, which means this can be deleted. Gold Dust. Did he get an extension offer? He did. So he's not coming in. Steve Blackman got an extension offer, which is there. He's not coming in. Psychosis did get a contract offer. Nagata did get a contract offer. Tracy Smothers is signed with me. I want to keep Tracy. So we will sign him for... Okay, let's try to do 980 for... Two years? God, dude, you really want that much money? Fuck, okay, I guess. I guess, bro, like, whatever. Sure, we'll go with that. Okay. Tracy Smothers deal is up. I'm gonna I'm gonna extend RVDs naturally, and I'm sorry about that, but I just need to do it for the money. Same with Taz, Sabu as well. Um, They're all going to, like, get their shit just re-upped. I'll just do that off screen. And it will pop up, so I'll remember. Wow, why are there so many fucking contracts coming up? Like, holy fuck. Don't do this to me, game. Okay, these are all my guys. So I can just do them uh, off screen. Right, I can just extend their deals off screen. The hardcore TV deals are coming up, which I can do off screen. Homicide has an extension offer, and these are extension offers. Okay. So holy fuck. Holy fuck. <laughs> oh, holy shit, folks. Okay. Let's quickly check out... I'll, I'll check out the new wrestling people just for you guys, and then we'll, we'll, we'll bounce, okay? We'll just... I'll do all this shit off screen, and we'll... <laughs> I'll piece the fuck out, okay? I'll, I'll, I'll check you on the flip side. Okay, so Elix Skipper's coming in. Elix Skipper coming in wrestling. I definitely want to shortlist him. Good little high flyer. Can do a lot of fun shit. Matt fucking Bentley. I do not want to bring in Matt Bentley ever. Incognito. That is the modern day. Uh, that is the modern day uh, Sin Cara, I believe, right? I don't totally care about him, if I'm honest. Jacilo Tassilo Jung? Oh, he's a he's a German wrestler referee. Okay. He's sick he <laughs> I am twelve. Um Japanese pool boy. What the fuck? Okay. Kaori Yonyama? I know her because she has really large lips. Oh wait, she's a is she a regen? I don't... I don't even know. Shusaku Wada is that guy. What the fuck is going on? Who are half these fucking people? Okay. Anyways. 
I'm going to catch you guys in the next one. I'll save up all, I'll, I'll do all this fucking shit off screen. You won't even fucking worry about it. When I come back, all this shit will be gone and you'll just be like, wow. So see you then. Peace.